you are watching Adjuster TV. Hey IAs, today I want to talk to you about how you get more work as an independent insurance adjuster. Welcome to the Auto IA Show by IA Path. At IA Path, what we do is pretty straightforward. You know how most companies have two to five year experience requirements? Well, at IA Path, we get those experience requirements waived with our 90 day online mentorship program. If you're interested, head over to IAPath.com. Today, we're going to be talking about all things. But first, or do you need you errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claims Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, they want to give you peace of mind while you work with the insured. To apply, head over to CPLIC.net today. Today we're going to be talking about all things work or how to get work or the strategy of how to get work as an independent insurance adjuster, especially when you're getting started, but also many times in your career, it can be difficult to stand out above the crowd, above all the other licensed adjusters to be able to get some of the work that you know is out there, but you might not just be finding it yet. So I wanna share with you today a video from one of our online courses that you can find at iapath.com. And here I break down the strategy of exactly what I walk my mentorship students through on how they can find work in their own career. But first, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, the IA firm, CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. As a full service insurance adjusting company, CCMS specializes in every part of the claim service cycle. Day-to-day -day property, casualty, complex, residential and commercial losses, strategic process and measured results. CCMS and Associates, they're currently looking for adjusters who are interested in working TWIA aka Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information or to join their roster, send them an email at careers at cm... For more information or to join their roster, email them at careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work dash with dash us. Hey guys, and welcome to video two of the Independent Adjusters Crash Course, how to play the adjuster lottery and win. Because that's what you're here to do. You're here to win, you're here to get work, you're here to achieve something in your life that you believe independent adjusting can bring to you and your family. We talked in the last video about what independent adjusting was and laid a groundwork of expectations about being a business owner and stuff. But now let's get into the strategy. How are we going to compete as a business, knowing we're a business, in this field of insurance adjusting as an investigator, what can we do to stand out against the other IAs and against everybody else who's a licensed adjuster? At its core, how do you get the advantage? So the types of questions that are gonna be answered today is, how do I get work? Uh, I'm new, how do I get hired? How can I increase my odds of getting work? Should I get Xactimate training? Is starting in property the best option? And what steps should I take to get started. So that's what this video is gonna answer and a whole lot more that you didn't even know, questions that we're gonna answer and a whole lot more that you didn't even know to ask yet. All right, so first off, I gotta explain something to you. We're gonna walk through the typical way of thinking. And if you're already thinking this way, don't beat yourself up, okay? This is not your fault. This is what the internet preaches 
high and far that this is how you become an independent adjuster. But this is the typical way of thinking. And there's five, five steps to the typical roadmap. Number one, I'm sure you've read this on the internet. You've had to have read this on the internet. Number one, get an adjuster's license. Number two, get Xactimate training. Number three, get property and or roof training. Number four, get on some rosters. Get on some major rosters, Pilot, Whirly, etc. And then number five, what do I say? Wait? Wait? You want me to wait? I just did all this work. I just got an adjuster's license. I just got training. And now the fifth step is to wait for a major weather event that will give you an opportunity to work. I have to disagree slightly with that. Um, I have a different way of looking at this. But basically, to me, the typical way of thinking at best turns your adjusting career into a game of kickball. Get to the back of the line, you new guy, and wait to be picked. That's what that says. If you are new, you just have to wait your turn. I don't play games like that. Okay, <laughs> let's not play that way. And at worst, though, the typical way of thinking turns your career into owning a lottery ticket. You're just playing an adjuster lottery, and you're likely not going to win. Okay, so... Best it's a game of kickball that you're waiting to get picked. Worst is you own a lottery ticket that you may never get your number called. Okay, so I want to teach you something. It's called the house advantage. If you play cards, you know anything about casinos and stuff, which I didn't before I came up with this. I learned it through them. Uh, but the house advantage, and here's the thing about a house advantage at casinos, is we always hear it, the house always wins. The house always wins. How do casinos operate? They know at the end of the day, they're going to win more often than not. They're going to make money even if you lose money. Even if you win money sometimes, overall, they're going to win in the long term. So the question becomes, if there's a house advantage in place in poker and at casinos, I believe there's a house advantage in the insurance adjusting industry. The house is always going to win. And so the question becomes for us, what are the odds then of winning? If it's not, for, everyone's not going to win. If everyone who gets an insurance adjuster license is not going to win, what are the odds that I'm going to win, Chris? That's the right question here, okay? Um, because the insurance industry is built on odds. So to me, yeah, it might not be a straight up comparison to a casino, but the insurance industry is built on it. So why wouldn't we be looking at the odds we're up against? So the insurance industry is built on numbers. Insurance companies may not perceive their financial state to be like gambling in a casino. Let's be fair, they probably don't. However, they know how to stack the odds in their favor by having more premiums. This is how an insurance company works. They have more premiums than they have in expected payouts of losses. So insurance companies approach this entire massive industry through a simple question that we're not gonna ask. What are the odds? So why should we do any different? The insurance companies make millions, if not billions of dollars. And I don't, not against insurance companies at all. If they can know how to make that much money by asking the question, what are the odds? That's probably the question we need to look at. So that's what we're gonna dive into. So I wanna talk about this house advantage. Here's the definition from the internet about the house advantage. The casino games provide a predictable long-term advantage to the casino or the house. At the same time, the game offers the player, or you in this industry, the possibility of a large, short-term payout. It's a possibility you might get a Hurricane Harvey event. <laughs> there's, a, there's a possibility you might make $300,000 in three months. Just a, a possibility, but it's not a certainty and it's not even a high probability. Um, and so... How this works though in our industry is there's massive turnover, massive turnover because not everybody can wait four or five years between each major hurricane that comes. And if you look at the history of all those great hurricanes where people make great money, there's a lot of years in between them, okay? Uh, Katrina and then Sandy, a lot of time there. Sandy to Harvey and Irma, which are the same year, a lot of time, okay? So. This massive turnover, as people quit trying to become an IA, as people uh, maybe even fail at becoming an IA when they get their shot, they're just not good enough and they have to leave. This benefits the big players like Pilot, Whirly, 
Eberl, etc. And why does it benefit them? And I'm not mad at them for it at all. This is the way the game's played, so they're playing it well. Is It's all about recruitment. How many people can you get on a roster? So when it, the big event does come, who's going to be able to offer services to the big insurance companies? The one who recruited the best. Because we know there's turnover, so there always has to be new IAs coming in. Stand up. Take your shot, right? Come on. You could win today. It's It has to happen. It has to. But people, there's massive turnover. Um, so most adjusters leave the industry because of one of the following reasons. One, they never got a shot. They waited three, four years, and they just never got a shot. I don't know what to do. Number two, uh, they get a major storm. They do get a shot, and they're one and done. As an example, I worked and during Hurricane Sandy. The only time I ever worked for a pilot catastrophe, and they're an amazing company, and my in-laws even work there. So I'm not dogging them at all. They're just a great example. I worked um, Hurricane Sandy for them. First time I'd ever gotten called for them. I didn't do a lot of the things I should have done. If I had listened to what I know now, I could have gotten a lot more work probably from them. But I worked for them for one storm, Hurricane Sandy. I thought I did okay. Everyone I worked for said I did okay, right? Uh, you did good, Chris. Oh, wow, I want to work with you more. But the storm was such a massive disaster, they kind of just didn't rate everybody who went into that storm because everybody and their mother got deployed, and it was really a big cluster. It was a big mess. And so I never really heard from Pilot again after that. I've had, you know, correspondents, hey, come get work. But I've never been asked to, you know, hey, attend this meeting or do this. But I've never actually gotten a real opportunity from them, and I haven't pursued that type of work. But my point is, I did one storm and I was done. If I was waiting for Pilot to call me back, which I wasn't, um, and I, so that's what a lot of people were doing. They got that one storm shot and they're waiting for another call and they never got it. They're just going to be done, one and done. Um, and then the other thing that happens is you run out of savings. You spend hundreds of dollars on an adjuster license, maybe thousands of dollars if you get all of them. Um, and then, you know, spend thousands of dollars on training, thousands of dollars on travel, lots of time, effort, energy, money, hopes, dreams into this, and you just run out. I got nothing left to give this industry, nothing left to give this career, and your bank account's empty. And so you got to go get a, a real job, right? So we need to look at this different. Uh, playing the adjuster lottery as a strategy for growing your business, because remember, you're a business owner. Playing the adjuster lottery as a strategy for growing your business is a mistake as a business owner. It's a mistake. You should not play the game that way. You should not play the game as a lottery. Don't do it. Now, <laughs> there's some big numbers I need to talk to you about because we're, at, we're asking the question, what are the odds? How do we do this? Um, and there is some big numbers. And I love these numbers from 2017. I pulled them up uh, from the Texas uh, Department of Insurance database. So this isn't something I made up. This is from Texas Department of Insurance. 17,732. That's the magic number I want you to remember. 17,732. What's this number, Chris? There was 17,732 insurance adjusters licensed in the state of Texas alone in 2017. That's one state. Now, that was a big year for because of Hurricane Harvey in Texas. A lot of people might have lived in other states and got licensed there, you know, got their reciprocal license, uh, you know, got licensed because a big storm hit and there's opportunity. But 17,732. The next year was still like 13,000 something. So it wasn't a fluke. It's tens of thousands, over 10,000 people every year getting licensed in Texas. That's a lot for just one state. So let's just pretend that was how many insurance adjusters there were. They're not all independent, right? So they're not all independent, but you got 50 other or 49 other states, right? <laughs> that people live and potentially get licensed in. So let's say it's roughly that many independent adjusters out there. 17,732? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Um, and so that gives the house, the big players, the IA firms, the advantage. Why? Because they have a potentially a pool of 17,732 people to pull from to put to work. But what's this do? This puts you at a disadvantage because you're the new guy. It's kickball. You're the last one to get picked, right? So we need to learn how to take that 
house advantage that Pilot has and Worley and the insurance companies and the high firms have, which they need to have, there's nothing wrong with it. They are not playing a mean game. That is just the way this industry works. But we need to learn how to deflate that house advantage down and in place put what I call an IA advantage there. There is a way to do it. Okay. So to do this, to, to accomplish an IA advantage, I have to introduce another thing too, called the probability model. Okay. And this probability model is something I developed, and it's the five ways to put the odds back in your favor as an IA. These are like the rules of the industry. You cannot play outside of this. This is the only way to improve your odds, the only way, the only five things you can do that can increase your odds. Now, there's different ways you can combine them. There's different sequences of things you can do, but there's only five rules to this game. Number one, you got to have an adjuster's license, and there's different adjuster licenses to get. So depending which licenses you have, how many you have, which ones you get first. Sorry, I'm rocking back and forth on the boat. Um, which adjuster licenses you have, how many you have, when you get them, whether you share them with the companies you work for, all that can help increase and give you a better probability of getting work. The second rule is um, you have to get on adjusting rosters. So you need to expand your customer base, okay? So an adjuster license is like expanding geographically. It's like setting up a new store for your coffee shop. Getting on more rosters is expanding who you're talking to. No longer am I just selling coffee as Dunkin' Donuts. I now am offering tea and matcha lattes, right? So I expanded my customer base and my offerings by getting on different rosters as an IA firm. So that's the second rule. Second way you can increase your probability. The third way is by getting training and certifications so you can expand your offerings. You can offer new products, okay? If Dunkin' Donuts tried to expand to a new base of matcha latte loving people but made a terrible latte nobody's going to come buy it so you as an adjuster you could say sure i do property sure i do auto yeah i do heavy equipment liability total loss but if you aren't any good at those if you don't know anything about those types of claims um you're gonna get an opportunity maybe and then people are gonna go ha get out of here so the third way we increase the probability the third rule you have to abide by to increase your odds of success is get training and certification okay so you can expand your offerings number four fourth rule and way to increase your probability in the probability model is networking you got to expand your allies got to expand how many people you work with your partners okay most of my work that i ever got especially with catastrophe came from networking somebody else telling me about it so the hurricane sandy example i was sitting on my sailboat kind of like right now waiting for a hurricane hurricane sandy went by went right on top of my boat while we were at a dock you know we saw some wind effects and all that stuff lots of water raised up no big deal it was a little scary at times but not real bad but then we didn't hear from pilot or any of our companies we were on the rosters for so i left i left on my sailboat i get a call from a friend saying hey you got a call from pilot i'm like no i'm not gonna call from pilot he's like man we just got uh, called to uh, Pennsylvania, you should call them. They say they need a lot of people. I'm like, what? Why have they called me then? So I pick up the phone and call them, even though they say, don't call us. <laughs> pick up the phone and call them based on a friend's recommendation, based on networking. Guess what happened? They deployed me because I called, because someone told me to call. That networking is what gave me the a better odds of success. So that's the fourth rule. The fifth rule is a little more ambiguous on how it affects is working. Um, if you are working, you expand your probability of getting work. You, the People want to hire someone who is working, who knows how to do the job, and they don't have to train you. They don't have to wonder if you know how to close a claim properly. So if they see you closing claims and doing work consistently, they're going to go, hey, that guy knows what he's doing. Obviously, he's working for a pilot. Hey, here's my card, and I work for EA Renfro. Uh, when you get off, if you don't have work, Give us a call. We'll try to put you to work as fast as possible. They know that person knows how to do the job. So a working adjuster tends to keep working. Okay. So now I want to walk you through a big picture, what I call the IA Advantage Roadmap. And we have three separate roadmaps that we now have that people can try to, different tracks you can take to become an independent adjuster. But overarching behind it all, there's this IA Advantage Roadmap that kind of is what helped us develop those three separate tracks. And this is the big mindset shift and different steps you have to take 
to become an independent adjuster. And you'll see it on your screen now, but these steps are the order that we recommend you do things in. And I wanna go over the three phases of the roadmap. The individual steps we'll get to later, but this is a different way to approach becoming an IA than most people have ever heard of. They've heard, get your license, learn Xactimate, get some construction training, um, get on some rosters, and then what, wait, right? This is different. This is very different. This is active. You're an active, you're actively pursuing it with a very strategic concept and tactic in mind, and you have the steps mapped out for you. All right, so let's look at the three phases of this roadmap. Uh, number one, the first phase is you've got to create your business. If you don't have an adjuster's license, if you don't have the right insurances in place, if you're not considered a business, legally speaking, if you don't have a bank account to get paid to, um, if you don't have an EIN number so you can be a 1099 contractor, you're not really a business. You're not ready. You're not open for business, right? So in phase one, we have to create your business. We don't have to wait for Pilot or Whirly or SCA or ACD to tell us to do this. We know this. We know what you have to do. So that's the first phase of becoming an IA. Number two, the second phase is to promote your business. Once you have a business, once you have an adjuster's license, once you have all your ducks in a row and you have some basic training behind you, it's not enough to sit and wait. We're not gonna wait. We're gonna be active. We're gonna be proactive and we're gonna go after work. But because we're a business, we know we have to market ourselves. We know we have to promote ourselves to our potential and target clients. There's no way around it. We have to go get customers. Okay, so that's phase two, the promote your business phase. And then phase three is expanding your business. This is where we focus on, okay, great. This is how I got started this one way, but now I wanna go into property and liability and catastrophe and all these different things. But I've gotten started, but now I wanna go explore my other options and figure out how to get in these other ways of the industry so I have even higher odds of success of getting work because I'm not locked in to one type of work. I now have lots of different options of what I can do. And so that's the phase three is expanding your business. All right, so I hope this has helped you kind of change the way you've been maybe looking at how to become an IA. Hopefully, it's helping you realize, hey, there's a different way to think about this than I ever imagined. And yeah, I have been doing one, two, three, four, wait. And maybe I do need to take a proactive approach to this. And maybe I do need to pursue this for the sake of me and my family and my hopes and my dreams that I've placed in this adjuster lottery. So going through this IA Advantage roadmap, and I'm gonna go into details here in the coming videos of it, going through this roadmap is a different way to do it. It's not the right way. It's what I think is a better way than what most people do. It's not the only way to get work. Some people really have great success doing one, two, three, four, wait. I just am not that type of person to sit around and wait and if you're watching these videos my guess is you aren't either thanks so much for watching video two of the independent adjusters crash course and i'll look forward to sharing some new insights on the next video